Well, good evening, uh, everybody. This is John Unell, a.k.a. John I Fly. And it's uh, February the 20th at 11.23 in the evening. So, another late one for me. I hope everybody uh, is enjoying the holiday weekend. As you know, it's going to be President's Day on Monday. But anyway, um, I've uh, titled the message tonight, Away Goes Trouble Down the Drain. Now, what the hell could I possibly be talking about? None other than the orange anus. Uh, to borrow a term from somebody I know very well. And that's Mr. Donald Trump, former president of the United States. Well, it's pretty interesting because um, there's uh, an author by the name of Maggie Haberman, I believe the name is pronounced. Uh, she's from the New York Times and she wrote a book called Confidence. Confidence Man, I should say. I believe that's the total title of it. And uh, she reveals something very interesting. Uh, she reveals that the staff and the White House residents periodically discovered wads of printed paper clogging a toilet. And they believed that Trump flushed pieces of paper down the toilet. Hmm. Should we be surprised? I wonder what the hell he shoved, flushed down the toilet. Well, it's interesting because the National Archives has repeatedly asked the Biden Justice Department to examine Trump's handling of White House documents. Could it be that maybe he flushed some of those down the toilet? Uh, I would tend to say, yeah. And those documents, uh, well, they're gone forever, I guess. When you flush them down the toilet, they had to have the plumber there several times to unclog the toilet. Unbelievable. But that's what the former president did. He feels that he's above the law, I guess. But uh, it's important to realize that uh, anything that comes out of the president's office, as far as I know, documents and paperwork, that has to be archived with the National Archives. That has to be turned over to the National Archives for future reference, if need be. They uh, archive them the way, file them away for future generations to be able to have access to it. And uh, the Washington Post reports that the National Archives officials, quote, suspected Trump had possibly violated laws concerning handling of government documents. Gee, really? Say it isn't so. I mean, after all, could it be possible that Johnny broke the law? Well, he feels that he's above the law. He felt it back then. He still feels that he's above the law. I guess he felt he was dictator-in-chief. But, Donald, it doesn't work that way. We live in a democracy, the United States of America. We don't live in a country that you wanted to turn it into, a fascist state. Well, anyway, the National Archives later retrieved, now get this, 15 boxes from Mar-a-Lago, the Washington Post reported. So not only did he try to flush, uh, I, I don't know how many documents he flushed down the toilet, when he left office, when he left the White House, he took documents with him without permission. And uh, also, it uh, turns out that there were some documents that were marked classified. 
you know, what the hell was he thinking? Was he going to use it for later on? Who knows? I, I don't trust Donald Trump for anything. It wouldn't surprise me if he was in cahoots with uh, Vladimir Putin, who's right now giving Ukraine some problems. We may, he may be going to war with them. We'll see. Coming days, we'll find out. But, uh, yeah, that's Donald Trump. Doesn't matter that there's law, you know, that he has to follow the laws, because he believes he's above the law. We've seen that how many times? Uh, another blow to Mr. Trump. Federal judge ruled that Trump can be held civilly liable for the Capitol riot. Now that's music to my ears. Who would have thought? You know, we think that sometimes they're going to get away with it. Or they, I should say, they think they are. You know, you have a lot of money, you know, you're rich or whatever. Oh, yeah, you can pay some people off or do whatever. But uh, I think Donnie's luck is running out major time. And this federal judge, which I believe he ruled on Friday, this past Friday, he also said Trump does not have absolute immunity from civil suits. That's important to know. I'm going to read um, a portion of it. You'll forgive me if I move my phone a little bit here. But I have to read this because it says it's so much better than me just ad-libbing. And uh, it says here, uh, and this is from uh, the Business Insider, I believe. Uh, yeah, businessinsider.com, it's online. And uh, it says here, a federal judge ruled on Friday that former President Donald Trump can be held civilly liable for the deadly Capitol riot on January 6, 2021. Trump's speech before his supporters stormed the Capitol during which he called on them to fight like hell against the 2020 election results, can reasonably be viewed as a call for collective action. U.S. District Judge Amit Mehta wrote in a 112-page ruling. He pointed to specific statements in which Trump used the word we, including, and here's all the we's he used, we will not take it anymore. We will stop the steal. We will never give up. We will never concede. All Mike Pence has to do is send it back to the states to recertify and we become president. We're going to walk down Pennsylvania Avenue, which of course he never did. The crowd did. He snuck back to the White House like the coward that he is, because he knew he, he wasn't gonna he he wasn't gonna be there. The word "we" and they have that in quotes, being used repeatedly in this context, implies that the president and rally goers would be acting together toward a common goal. Meta wrote, "That is the essence of a civil conspiracy." And I say amen to that. The focus of Meta's ruling were three civil lawsuits brought against Trump by Democratic lawmakers and Capitol Police officers who defended the building on January 6th. The judge ruled on Friday that Trump is not immune from the litigation and can be held accountable for his actions and statements related to the Capitol riot. Meta acknowledged the import of his decision, but said that the events of January 6th were unprecedented. And I'll say they were unprecedented. To deny a president immunity from civil damage is no small step, the ruling said. The court well understands the gravity of its decision, but the alleged facts of this case are without precedent. Meta also noted that Trump was not acting in his capacity as president 
when he held the rally and told his supporters to march to the Capitol. After all, the president's actions here do not relate to his duties of faithfully executing the laws, conducting foreign affairs, commanding the armed forces, or managing the executive branch. The ruling said they entirely concern his efforts to remain in office for a second term. These are unofficial acts, so the separation of powers concerns that justify the president's broad immunity are not present here. The judge also said that the allegations in the civil lawsuits against Trump are enough to establish, quote, a plausible conspiracy involving President Trump. That conspiracy includes the far-right groups, Proud Boys and Oath Keepers, and others who stormed the Capitol on January 6th, Meta added. He highlighted that a civil conspiracy does not require an express agreement between those involved. Well, I could go on and on, but I'm not going to. Uh, but it's common sense. I mean, anybody who watched it, I watched the speech as it happened. Trump had a big rally, and it was, well, he wasn't the only, he spoke at the, the last speaker, but everybody that was on the, the platform there were, con, were encouraging the crowd to do insurrection. This Go back and listen to their speeches. I'm not going to go over it now. But Giuliani came right out and said, let's, let's have trial by combat. That sounds like a physical violence to me against the federal government and those who run in Congress. And I don't know what they were thinking. I guess they thought, well, we're, you know, they were probably sure if Trump was going to get back in. Uh, they thought that Mike Pence was going to rule in their favor, but to his credit, and I don't care for P Mike Pence that much, but I have to credit him, he has integrity, and he was honest, and uh, he followed the Constitution, which is more than what we can ever say about Donald Trump. Donald Trump's only worried about himself, and that's it. But anyway, that's all I wanted to talk to tonight. Oh. As I mentioned before, you might uh, see uh, Russia invade Ukraine. And uh, the last I heard now, there was uh, supposedly Putin was, uh, had, or had given orders to his generals to push ahead. But now I'm hearing that uh, President Biden and Putin have agreed to a summit uh, can, I, I believe we use the word conditionally. Um, we'll see. Um, let's hope they can use a diplomatic solution here because the war breaks out, it's going to affect the whole world, people. The whole world. You think you're paying expensive for gas now. You watch what happens if there's an invasion. Hopefully we can avoid the mess. But anyway, thank you for taking the time to listen and watch. Uh, remember, you can look me up on YouTube. I go by John I. Fly. It's all small letters, J-O-H-N-I, F as in Frank, L as in Love, Y. On Facebook, I go by my real name, John R. U. Nell. That's U-N-E-L-L. -L. And I ask that you just, you know, like it and subscribe if you haven't already. And feel free to comment. I, I really do read all those comments. So be sure to comment. Let me know your thoughts. Um, it's going to be an interesting few weeks, I'll tell you that much. I can't wait until... Uh, the January 6th committee has live hearings. I'm, I'm going to be watching that very closely. But anyway, thanks for taking the time to listen and watch. Uh, don't forget, primaries are coming up. Make sure you go out and vote. Vote blue no matter who, and take a friend with you if you can. We need the people to go out and vote. Get these idiots out of office. 
by the pushing for a fascist government. Okay, I will talk to you soon. Have a great upcoming week, and I will talk to you soon. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye.